We're green dogging again. As you guys know, we're watching the running back. He goes on a route. We follow like that. And that is exactly how the blitz is supposed to work. Poetic. No, I'm about to go in. Tell me that I couldn't do it, but I got to bring it back. Something really numb with it. Let's go. Tell me where you're from, where you stay. Now I keep it lit from the coast to the bay. Peace on the right. If you guys are sick of wasting money on packs, go check out my sponsor. They offer the cheapest and most reliable way to buy coins straight from the source. Use code MAZE at checkout for 15% off your entire order. What is going on, boys? And welcome back to another episode of Madden Academy. This one coming to you by popular demand. We are going to be going over the infamous green dog blitz now, if you guys are new to the channel or haven't really been to the streams very much i run a blitz called the green dog blitz and i run it quite often i talk about it all the time there's a green dog emote in the twitch chat it's a lot of fun but most people don't really understand how it works so the way the video is going to be organized is at the beginning i'm going to show you guys my team how i have everything set up abilities chemistries players all that stuff and then we're gonna get into some games and then after the games I'm gonna give you an in-depth breakdown in practice mode of how the green dog blitz works that I'm running I want you guys to keep in mind this blitz is not something I run every play in my head I try to limit it to one time a drive I, I try not to run it more than that because if you run it too much it can be easy to get beat for a big touchdown so I obviously want to refrain from doing that so this video is gonna be primarily a defensive video however if you do want a full breakdown of my offense I made a full course over at Mazomatic com that breaks down everything I run in game from personnel to audibles to every route combo that I use. So once again, you can find that full ebook for my Jets offense over at mazomatic.com. But before we get into this one, we're gonna go over the best and worst comment of the day. The best comment coming from David Tillman, who said, This man really had the trap remix to VeggieTales theme playing. Those holy veggies are gonna be scared when they find out how Maze uses cucumbers after 9 p.m. What are you implying, David? Did I shove them in my ass? And for the worst comment in my last video, I told you guys, what does green dog mean? Wrong answers only. You guys left me some very interesting comments and the worst one by far comes from Mason Kim who said they call it green dog because the Grinch clapped May's dog's cheeks and got it pregnant. No, bro. No, just no. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Be sure to take notes because there's a lot of information or don't. I don't really care. <laughs> Taking a look at the team and how my abilities are set up ever since the AP change and everything changed. I've been kind of mixing it up a ton and I wasn't really sure what I was going to run. But lately, I think I got it dialed in, at least on offense. So we got a post up on our center, an edge protector on our outside tackles, and then we got matchup nightmare on Vernon Davis. This is something I'm thinking about taking off. I don't really know how much this actually helps me in game. I haven't really noticed it very much. And then we got 10 AP on the man, Lamar Jackson. The reason for this, if you take a look at his stats, I took off Playmaker. Playmaker being 6 AP was awesome against man coverage, even after it went up. Uh, but against zone coverage, which is what pretty much everyone's running nowadays, it's still good, but I just didn't think it was worth 6 AP, and I thought I was getting a better deal using Escape Artist. So on Lamar Jackson, we got Roaming Deadeye, Escape Artist, Hot Route Master, and Gunslinger. If you guys didn't know, there's a glitch with Roaming Deadeye where if while you're on the run, you let go of trigger right before you throw the ball, it's going to think you're standing outside the pocket, even though it's a throw on the run. It's going to make every single throw on the run perfectly accurate. And I don't want to suck my own dick here. Balls, bro. But I think I discovered this glitch last year. I'm the one who was tweeting about it way before everyone else. It was like August of Madden 20 when they first added this ability to the game. I was tweeting about this. But this combination of abilities on Lamar Jackson makes him, in my opinion, the best quarterback in the game, or at least for the way I play. I was using Brett Favre for a while, but I realized Brett Favre is not good as a mobile passer. Lamar Jackson, on the other hand, if we take a look at his stats, 99 speed, 99 throw power, 98 short accuracy, 94 mid, 92 deep, with 99 throw on the run. So, 99 speed with escape artist makes a huge difference. You can pretty much run around back there and make the craziest plays, and especially when you pair it with Roaming Deadeye, which is only one AP. I love it, baby. So that's how we got our offense situated. We also got Julio Jones and Braylon Edwards. Those are my two favorite receivers. Isaac Bruce is kind of just over there. 50 of 50 balanced, though. We got 50-50 lockdown, 50 of 50 Niners theme team, 41 run stuff. 
35 zone run, 40 sprinter, and 40 brawler. So the chemistries are looking amazing as well. Now, for defense, this is where things kind of get a little tricky because I've been switching up these abilities a lot, and I mentioned uh, that I might be switching even more. But right now, I got a pick artist on Eric Berry. I got mid zone KO and pick artist on Derwin James. I got mid zone KO, pick artist, and acrobat on Darius Slay, Dante Robinson, and Richard Sherman. What I'm thinking about doing is taking off one of these acrobats and putting on Lurker on my outside linebackers. I recently just switched from the 4-6 playbook to the New York, New York Giants so I can run Big Dime 1-4-6. But because of that, I'm no longer able to sub in safeties at my outside linebacker position in 3-3-5 wide. So I got to use actual linebackers now. The bonus to that is they're really good in the run game. They're really good at getting block sheds when I blitz them. The con is they're terrible in coverage. So putting Lurker on them might be the fix for that, but I'm still kind of messing around with it. Uh, and you guys are going to see how they play and kind of how I've been playing. I do tend to blitz all five guys from 3-3-5 wide like 75% of the time. I'm not usually putting those guys in coverage very much, but I still think Lurker would help. I know I just said a million things regarding my team. I hope it sunk in. If it didn't, maybe just rewind. Maybe just go to the gameplay. I don't really know how you want to do it that's up to you but that's the team right now boys i'm actually loving it once i switched to lamar my life got so much better i'm having so much more fun playing with lamar i recommend you guys switch to a mobile quarterback as well i know a lot of people are still running playmaker but for me i think escape artist is a better bang for your buck prodigy mc youtube we got a youtuber baby youtuber versus youtuber he's using dak prescott i'm using lamar should be a good matchup all right so we're starting off on the defensive side of the ball and like i said in the beginning i only am really gonna be running that blitz uh, periodically in the game. If you start running it every time, it becomes very easy to dot it, so I want to be careful with that. I also set my zone drops to 20 and 5 to start, and I turn my auto flip off. The reason for that is when I come out in a play, for example, this play right here, it's going to be a match with the seam flats if I have default zone drops. If you reset your play to start, it sets your zone drops back to default. Now, I don't know if I did a good job of explaining that because he kind of quick hiked me there. But basically, when you set your zone drops, match coverage no longer works. The purples, the seam flats, they're going to play like curl flats, a.k.a. five yards where I just set them. If I want them to go back to default once I'm already in the play, all you got to do is reset your play. So I'm going to call cover four show two. This is a match coverage. Right now, as it is, it will not be a match coverage. Once I press square L2, reset my play. Now my zone drops are back at default and everybody will match the way they're supposed to. Now, I have linebackers on the field. Oh, he beat the match coverage. Well, that's, that's a risk of running match coverage. Sometimes you get beat like that. But just notice this guy's also in his championship game, so he's probably going to be sweating his ass off because he's trying to get to the Super Bowl. There's one game out of the Super Bowl for him. But now we're on offense. we got to make up for that little blown game of match coverage, starting off with a baby dot. A lot of times I like that first dot just to see what covers are in. Spacing switch is a very conservative play call. It beats man with the post, and then it's a big zone beater with those hitches. He's in cover one robber press, so he's probably going to be running primarily man coverage. He's got El Toro edge threat and a lot of acrobats, no one step aheads. So if he is running man coverage, I don't think it's gonna work out too well for him. But we're gonna find out. He is running man coverage again. You see Vernon Davis over there. Nice. I don't know, man. Looked to me like Vernon Davis beat his man. He's got matchup nightmare too, so I figured I could just kind of throw it up to him, but it was an overthrow. So now we're gonna be running Z spot. Hopefully it's man coverage again. I, I don't know what really this guy's plan of action is. But this is, oh my god, okay. Good coverage right there. The man coverage actually stuck. And now in a third and 18, we are in a position where we need yards because I want to go for it on fourth down, but I'm not going to go for it if it's like fourth and 18. So I need at least five to 10 yards right here. Low pass on the in route. And it's a nice catch by Isaac Bruce. This is going to be doable. We're just going to run the exact same play, to be honest. He's running man coverage again. And uh, I have a good feeling. It looks like he might have just switched it to cover three. If he did, Braylon Edwards will be open on a cover three beater. We're going to, we're going to find out. Yes, sir. And Roaming Deadeye is going to make that a dot every time. And that was just 200 IQ by me. I noticed that he audible to something because his guys changed alignment a little bit. And the safety was on the weak side. Flood, as you know, is a cover three beater. So it worked out perfectly. All right, so now after he dotted me in match coverage, we're going to come out and run that green dog blitz. We're going to call Mike Blitz Zero. Bring these guys down as much as possible. And so my assignment here with the green dog is that running back. He stayed in, and so we, we green dog him with the blitz. We got nano detected. That's kind of annoying. But as you can see, my assignment stayed in to block, so I blitzed with my user. If he would have went out on a route, I would have followed him. Now, I will say, when he's running something like a slot right here or gun split close, it's a little bit harder to green dog because there's also... Another running back in there to block, and he hits me on the delay fade. A good dot by him. Dak Prescott showing those legs can do some work. So the defense I'm running now is like a cover two hybrid. 
It's really weird. I actually didn't set it up the way I wanted it to. But it's a really weird defense that not many people know about. And so how it works is I'm in a cover two, and I essentially change it to a cover three. And I like this a lot better. Throw it. Oh my god, I thought he was going to throw the in route. Good read by him to wait on that little hitch route from the running back. But basically, as you can see, we're in a cover two. What I can do with this package, I mean, is change those guys to deep thirds instead of deep halves. And that's going to make them play a lot better on the sideline as opposed to deep halves, which honestly kind of suck. This guy is actually using Dak Prescott very effectively with the scrambling. I'm running that cover three, cover two bullshit again. It's, it's honestly one of the best covered shells in the game. Maybe the best, in my opinion. And it looks like he's taking off with Dak again, this time not getting as much on the ground. Right, I'm going to make it look like I'm green dogging him again, but it's going to be a fake green dog. Not a real green dog, man. I actually don't know what zone that is, but it's going to be like a weird cross... And once again, he's going to throw it to the flats. There we go. There we go. The user played phenomenally. We got Dak Prescott again. He's going to bring up a third and long. All right, I'm actually just going to user blitz. Wait, that's not good. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. That's got to be me. There we go. We were running man coverage, a little bit of a blitz, and we end up getting an interception. Oh, my God. Bad stick work. As you guys could probably tell on that last play, when he motioned over, my man coverage got a little bit messed up. I'm glad he wasn't able to hit the tight end for a big gain, uh, but that's why we weren't able to run in there with our user. Jesus Christ, dude. That man coverage is really sticking on the outside. Usually, a low-balled in route on the break is going to be a dot 10 out of 10 times, but something about the way they're playing. I'm actually going to put him on a streak because it looks like he might be shading underneath. Yeah, he 100% was shading underneath. Oh, no. Throw that one away. Throw that one away. So that's what he's doing. He's running shaded underneath man coverage, and that's why they're sticking so much despite not having abilities. So we are going to be trying to beat him over the top here. We'll see if Julio has some safety help. He does. But Vernon is going to be open there. Ah, oh, okay. Bad stick work again, but we get the first down. It does look like he's giving me the same look every time, and so if he continues just to run shaded underneath man coverage every time, um, it's probably not going to work out too well for him. So what we're going to do here... The streak on the left is going to be open, and the streak down the center is going to be open. A little high pass. Out of bounds. I could run the ball here the way he's giving me the spread line, but I kind of just want to pass. And I'm kind of expecting Vernon Davis to be open here. Yep, there we go. There we go, Vern. There we go, Vern. Great catch. Great throw. And we're in the end zone. You can't give me just man coverage every time. We're going to beat it. The best advice I can give you guys that that guy was not doing is you got to switch up your defense. You can't give someone the same look every single time. Because any good player is going to learn to beat that. And it looks like, dude, Dak is taking off again this time. Only getting about six. But we got we got to contain Z Dak. We got to find a way to contain him. At right, third and nine, I am going to be running this blitz again. I hope he does not motion. He is. God damn it. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'm going to use her. That. Oh, come on. One of the main reasons I switched to this playbook in the first place was to run uh, Big Dime 146. Now... I haven't really had many opportunities this game to run it, but on fourth and nine, he's not going to be able to run the ball here, and we are going to try it. Damn it! You know what, Derwin? You're in a hook. Play the slant. I don't like spread. I don't like spread at all because I tend to run cover three. And oh, Leroy Glover's just not fast. I got caught on the D-line. If I was actually on my user, that might have been a pick. I'm going back to this cover two look. I am resetting the play to start. The reason for that, again, is because it sets my zone drops back to default, and my I don't want my clouds to be on 20 or 25. I'd rather than play default clouds unless I have a hard flat underneath that. So if that makes sense to you guys. Basically, if I'm running a look like this, where I have my curl flat set to five, my clouds set to 20, that's okay because we're, we're effectively covering all of the sideline. If I only have one flat out there, meaning like only a cloud flat, I'm going to want it to be default because that plays about 10 to 15 yards. But if it's all the way back at 25, the flats are going to be so open, it's an easy read. So basically, if I'm running only clouds, I'm going to reset the play to start. It makes my zone drops go back to default. And Dak is just coming out again. Dak is mobile as hell. I didn't realize he was this fast. Package I'm in really... Oh, no. What are you doing? Dak down to the one. I'm not going to call a timeout. He's only got one timeout. So if we do get a stop right here, then he's going to be forced to hurry up and spike it or run out of time. To be honest, I am going to run commit. I'm kind of expecting him to run the ball. He's not. I'm going to go in the flat. Good dot by him. So with his touchdown at the end of the half, he tied up the game, but we are getting the ball to start. Something I haven't done a lot of is use PA boot over, and with Lamar Jackson at 99 speed, this is a fantastic play. And a little baby check down right there. 
As I said before, though, this guy is running some weird coverage. It looks like his user's on that right side safety. We're going to make him choose between this streak and the outside streak. And, of course, he switched. He, this guy is actually not bad. He definitely knows what he's doing here. Send the spy. Send your little spy, bitch. Send your little bitch-ass spy, huh? Send him. There we go. Goodbye. Give me the first. Give me the first. Give me the first. Thank you, Lamar. Don't fumble. This guy's pretty good at switching between the safeties. He knows which side I'm trying to make him make a choice on. So, uh, it's, it's been a little bit difficult. We're going to try again this time. I don't, I don't really know if, uh, if he's going to... Yeah, he's just staying up on that safety. No! Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. He's only rushing like one every time. So I'm trying to make him just send the spy and then I can take off with Lamar. And that's one of the benefits of using Lamar in the first place is if you play someone who's a weirdo that wants to play like this, you can usually get some pretty good, good yardage on the ground with your feet. I tried to run the ball there with Derrick Henry, give Lamar a little break because if you run too much with your quarterback, obviously you can tire him out and we don't want that. Another dot on the in route to Isaac Bruce. And just like that, we're in field goal range. Got to be careful, though. I want at least three points out of this drive. Here, I'm running a little bit of a counter. I'm going to actually ID this outside guy. Motion over Braylon Edwards. And hopefully, Braylon picks him up on a block. We're going to find out. Nope, Braylon did not. Didn't even come close, actually. It right, looks like he is still in man coverage. The man coverage just switched, though. Damn it, we didn't get it off. That would have been a nice dot for a first down. So it really looks like this guy switched up his coverage. He's now using the middle linebacker instead of the safety. He's going to cover three. Yes, sir. Take off. Why wait, Lamar, you're so slow. Lamar, he's so tired. He, he did. He was not 99 speed on that play, I'll tell you that much. I'm just going to take my three, but I got to say that was not good planning on my end. If I would have let Lamar get a little more energy, that probably would have been a first down. And right as I crossed the line of scrimmage, I could feel him slow down, and I knew I wasn't going to get any extra yardage. So next time, I got to watch Lamar's stamina levels to make sure he's good. So once again, I reset my play, and it gets my zone drops to default. Those, so those scene flats are actually going to play match coverage instead of their average five yards. And match coverage is a lot harder to dot than just your average five yard curl flat. The reason match is so good is because it's almost like another user. They're unpredictable. Usually when you see zone drops, it's very predictable where they're gonna be playing on the field. But match coverage, as you can see, is kind of playing all over the place. It's giving this guy some problems. I'm probably just gonna keep running this. So once again, I'm resetting my play. I'm turning this into match coverage. This guy wants to run a lot with Dak Prescott. So the way I'm sending five pass rushers at him every single time, it's actually pretty good. Oh, what a dot. What? Oh, he dropped it. What a great play. I think that was Robinson right there. He has mid-zone KO, so that's got to be the reason why he played that. And now on fourth and ten, we are going to go back to big dime one four six. Last time, it didn't work too well. Throws it right to me. Bear there we go. 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 And we're already in field goal range. Now, I'm not really sure if big dime one four six came in there with the pressure. Uh, I just started running it this week, so I'm not 100% sure all the nuances of how to run it and stuff. That's going to be a dot. Julio! A touchdown on this drive essentially ends the game, so obviously that's what we're going for. Looks like he's in man coverage once again, so we're going to motion out this crosser, see if Braylon Edwards gets open over the middle. No, I'm taking off Lamar. There we go. Inside the five. That's why I love Lamar, bro. Just being able to do that whenever you want. And even though he's probably expecting a run right here, we are going to actually pass it. Lamar's got roaming, so we're going to actually try to roll out here to the right after the play action. There we go. There we go. Good pass, man. It was a high pass. Could have been overthrown. A little bit risky, uh, but he ran commit, so that was just easy touchdown. All right, so last time that defense I was running, that cover through was giving him a lot of problems. We're going to do that again. Since our safety's on the weak side, we're going to have to deep half on the right so we don't give up any cover three bombs because that safety's not going to really help there deep. And once again, a nice dot on the sideline. I got to watch out for that, that motioned out corner. Running this cover two look again. Cover two, cover three, weird shit. And there we go. Even though he was checking it down, not only did my soft squat play the crosser, it also came down and played that for a five-yard loss. So that's what default zone drops can do for you sometimes. This time we're going to run that double Mabel look out of a cover two. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Let's go, man. Mid-zone KO for the win. A user blitz. This is Mike Blitz. I'm just screaming up the middle. He doesn't have any anybody on the line, so we can't really block this. Gonna motion him over. I'm not even I'm not even <laughs> I wasn't even pressed in my man coverage, but as you can see, when there's only five linemen, you're rushing five, your user's gonna come in free every time. So we're gonna actually switch our coverage this time. I don't want to run. Uh-oh, my, my curls are at. Good dot. Oh my god! Bad throw. He got cheated a little bit. 
And that's going to do it, man. 181, three touchdowns for Lamar. I feel bad kicking this guy out of his championship game, but hey, you got to do what you got to do. Big Venus, 9-1-1. He's got Jalen at quarterback going to be taking us on. All right, so coming out in game number two, he's in gun wing offset, and there's no way in hell this is not a run. Thank you. Give me those Ooh. cheeks, baby. Anybody who comes out in some shit like that, gun wing ace offset over whatever, they're going to run inside zone. It's, it's, it's just that simple. That's a dot. That's a dot. Okay, I didn't know that gun ang angle weak offset bullshit has dots out of it, too. But now we're going to have to watch out for that. A 30-yard corner, that's going to really give my cover two some problems. So if he's in that formation, cover two might not be the move here. Uh, let's find out. Or oh, we're going to switch to a cover three this time. Passing again. Oh, Justin Smith, you were right there. I'm actually kind of liking this defensive look right here. It's like a cover three cloud, but I made it myself. That makes it nice. Oh, no, that's open. Oh, and the delay fade too. All right, this guy might not be a bot. Usually when they come out in some weird formation, I assume they're a bot, but he looks like he's actually got a scheme out of it. And now he's three for three, so we're going to have to lock in. He's in trips now. This is a perfect opportunity to bring out this Mike Blitz. Dude, running the ball again. No yards that time. I was going to say we're going to set up some man coverage this time. Um, I think we're going to do the exact same thing. Cover two man. We're going to shade underneath and inside because I'm not really too worried about getting beat deep. And then we're going to have a lot of zone on the field. I'm probably only going to rush like two people. So man coverage with a lot of zone if you're running a look like this. Like you see, everybody's manned up. We got zones all over the field. I fucked it up. I forgot I'm in a certain package. I can't put my safeties in curl flats from this package, which sucks. There we go. We sent the spy. That was the guy who was in man coverage on the drag. He's going pretty fast. This guy's playing up-tempo, so sorry if I wasn't explaining exactly what I was doing there. But we got the stop, so we get the ball back. So it looks like he's in a cover three to start. The reason I say that is because it's either cover three or man coverage. Actually, there's three guys on the right. This very well could be man coverage, but if it's a cover three, it's man coverage. There we go. Still got the dot. Um, if that was a cover three, that would have been a cover three beater. But he's going to be running cover one hole. Because usually whatever they come in first, that's their shell that they're going to run most of the game. So even though at the beginning of the year, man coverage was really good, I feel like right now it's not that good. It can be, but if you're not running one step ahead, he's got a lot of mid-zone KOs on the field. So he's probably going to be switching back and forth between zone and man. Right now he's running... I got Julio. Go get it, boy. Julio with the high release, deep route running, all that good stuff. Gets a catch, 70 yards on that one. A lot of times if they're pressing your slot corner, you got them on like a simple streak or something, a lot of times they're going to win that matchup. I'm going to guess he's blitzing here. I'm going to try to double team this guy, roll out. I want to hit Vernon in the back of the end zone. Let's see if we can do that. Let's see if we can do it. If you don't know about there he is. There he is. And Roman Deadeye makes that a perfect throw every time. Basically how it works is you let go of the running trigger right before you let go of the ball. So then even though you're still throwing on the run, it triggers it as your feet are set. It's a little glitch in the game. Not to suck my own dick, but I think I'm the one who discovered that last year. I tweeted about it a lot at the beginning of Madden 20. And now it's pretty common knowledge. That was a good dot. I was going to have to open. I had to choose between the crossers. We sent a lot of pressure there. Uh, honestly, against... PA boot over. You can do all the coverage adjustments you want. It's a pretty tough play to stop. If you send some heat at them and get some good contains on the outside, it makes that play way less effective. So what I'm doing is I'm running Mike Blitz 3 when he's in bunch tight end, spreading my line, QB containing, and the fact that I have 5D linemen all rushing the quarterback, um, they're getting pretty good sheds. Yeah, he's going to throw it to the tight end. Nope. All right. Again, we got some good pressure. He couldn't do what he wanted. And right, now we're running this cover 2, cover 3 look. I call it cover 2, cover 3 because it's it basically is a cover two, but we're turning the deep halves into thirds, and they play a lot better on the sideline. Good dot, good dot. All right, this time we set our zone drops back to default. We're in the same look, but we're having more coverage over the middle. That way, he's not going to be able to hit that curl route like he just did, and it worked out perfectly. Let's go, baby. Perfect defense with the user. Anytime they're running PA boot over, you always got to watch that backside delay fade, and I got it. Switch to a cover three this time. Somehow that's going to almost get there. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man, Sherman, did he get the interception on that? That was an unbelievable play. I don't think he was in bounds, but, hey, I'll take it. So there's a single high safety on this play, and there's not man aligned. He just audibled to make his deep third on the right a deep half. I noticed the way he played there. And so if we motion him out and he's pressed, I actually think Edwards can maybe get by that deep half. We're going to find out. It looks like he did. Come on, Edwards. Get that shit. No way! Ball might have been underthrown a little bit. He had a couple steps on him. I'm pretty sure that if that was a better thrown ball, that that could have been a touchdown. All right, man. Now we're going to go back to this green dog blitz that I have been focused on here. So, again, bring that guy down. Oh. Oh. 
Oh, and it comes in screaming. There we go. Again, he's quick hiking me, so I didn't have really time to set it up. See, again, he's just quick hiking me. Let's go, man. The user is all over the place. That's the second time I've hit out a pass from someone else. If this guy doesn't freaking stop quick hiking me, we're going to run a fake green dog. And, of course, he's just quick hiking me. We didn't have time to get anything off. We're not having time for anything, really. Right, we're playing a little bit more aggressive here. Instead of a deep third, we got Derwin James in a mid-read. And there we go. A little bit of a weird animation. And we're getting the ball back again. So one thing I do want to point out in this game is that I have been pretty much switching up my defensive play call every time. This is a cover three. If he audibles again to deep half that guy, uh, it's not going to be a cover three beater. But if he does not, obviously. Yeah, that was... Beater was not open, so I had to check it down. I gotta say, one thing I absolutely love about using Lamar is that when you roll out with him with the skate artist, oh no, oh no, oh no, I, that was just a bad read. When you roll out with him with the skate artist, you got a lot more time to make a read, but obviously it doesn't matter because I made a pretty bad read right there. I don't know why I forced that pass. I honestly, I didn't need to throw that. I could have done a lot of different things. Oh no. Okay, it's open. Oh, Sherman, you're so good. He's tall. He's really tall. He's like 6'3", big jumping, big zone coverage. Gonna get up, swat that one down. Nice job, Sherm. Bro, was he not on a blitzing angle? Every time I click off, I'm expecting him to run at the quarterback, but he's just like chopped his feet. Uh, of course, I got caught on someone else. You know, I hate playing people like this because it's like, it's incredibly hard to get the shit set up that you want set up, but we're gonna go for it again. So we're double mabling the sidelines. We are usering over the middle. We're running a cover two, cover three. That's got to be you, Ronnie. Rob. What are you doing, buddy? Ronnie, come on, buddy. All right, set in five again this time. Default cloud flats. Cover two, cover three bullshit. I don't know what else to call it. And the pressure comes in. That's a great thing about running three, three, five wide as it is. Is this guy's just going so fast. I don't even have to talk. I don't even have time to talk to you guys. Is when you have five D linemen instead of the safeties. There you go. No way he's going to catch that. Holy shit, this guy's got about one play in his in his playbook, and th that's it. So I'm going to say, even though our offense hasn't been doing that great this game, we're still up 7-0. to Our defense hasn't given up any points. So this video is a defensive video. Good dot, good dot. Good catch, Braylon. And so if we go down and get at least three points here, this game will be pretty much sealed. It's been like a cover three. Stay in bounds. Let's go, man. Another good dot. What? How are his feet out? We got to fix the sideline animations in this game. That's that's my one thing. The sidelines suck, dude. They are so bad at getting their feet in. And it's like, bro, these are NFL receivers. Some of them legends. And you're going to tell me these motherfuckers are not getting their feet in? Why are you slowing down, Vernon? Oh, you want to... What is going on with the sideline, dude? I really don't know. The sideline absolutely fucking hates me, bro. I, I, I don't know what to say other than that, man. Truck that bitch, Derek. Let's go. Almost there. Almost there. All right, fourth and inches. Realistically, I should probably run the ball or something here. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. <laughs> That's a great dodge. On the run bullet pass. I didn't even get the dead eye, but it's a great throw from Lamar. This is going to be man coverage. Um, I am fully expecting Julio Jones to beat his man. He's a little tired, but I think he can do it. Ah, oh, the safety, of course, is over the top there. To Braylon, it is. <laughs> All right, everybody's just so damn tired, I got to run the ball. Uh, what happens with your quarterback when they get tired is they can't even throw the ball like 10, 15 yards. They'll say out of range because they're tired. So, honestly, that run was literally just to give a little gas to Lamar. I probably shouldn't have hurried up here. Uh, that was really stupid of me, but here, here we are. And another dot. Let's go, baby. So, everybody's still really tired. We're going to run the ball again. This is a little buck sweep to the other side. As you can tell, it's man coverage because everyone is lined on the people on the left. So that's going to leave the right wide open, hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully get outside. There we go. There we go. Stop and go. Click on. Ah, uh, I clicked on a little late. Inside the five still, though. And Lamar is still dark blue, man. There's nothing I can really do at this point to get him untired. So we're just going to have to go under center, run the ball again, and hope that Derrick Henry gets in the end zone. Looks like he's in goal line or something. Running the ball, probably not the best idea. Yeah. That's whatever. Still in the dark blue. Still in the dark blue, bro. Is that not three run plays in a row? You know, this might be stupid. You know what? I almost know it's stupid, but we're running QB draw. Lamar Jackson is in the red, so if he gets hit, he'll probably fumble. But I don't care about that. I want to get in the end zone with him. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Fuck me! Damn it! All right, heading to the fourth quarter, man. You know what? I think I could run just a nice little four-verts action right here, and then I'm just going to run it. Lamar... 
get in there. And he fumbled at the one. Oh my god. Oh my god. Just my luck, dude. Sick. Hey, you know what? It is what it is. That was my fault. I should have probably went down. But it was third down. I got a little overzealous. But it happens. Run your inside zone and give me my ball back. What do you got on Josh Allen? Don't tell me it's... Oh, he's got Bazooka. Okay, I can deal with Bazooka. I thought for a second he had Omaha. I was like, no way we've been playing that bad. What are you going to throw that? What are you going to throw that with Jalen? Now he's tired. All right, so once again, we're running the base seam flats for to have them match. I kind of like the way they play out there when it's match coverage. Just like that. That's the seam flat that I just put on the field. And we still can't get into the end zone, man. I'm running. I'll take that, dude. You know, Lamar, even though you fumbled, I'm still trusting you with the ball here. This has got to be man coverage. I almost guarantee you this is man coverage. I'm running just some bullshit double slants. I'm hitting Isaac Bruce. Really? I couldn't even get the I couldn't even get a slant off. Why? I don't know why I'm running five wide, but it looks like he's in a cover three now. If he is, we are gonna have Vernon Davis wide open. Or Derrick Henry back in the end zone. High pass out of reach. Fuck! Jesus Christ! I'm gonna be completely honest with you. If this is a sweaty game, you kick the three here, you win the game, right? But it's not a sweaty game. This is a Madden Academy, and I want it to be a close game or a domination. So I'm going for it on fourth here. We're gonna roll out to the right if we can. Back of the end zone, Vernon Davis. And that's how you end a game like a man. Go for it on fourth. Be a man. All right, we're gonna go for another green dog here. Bring the man covered down. Bring this guy. Blitz him. Ah, oh, fuck. See? This quick hiker, dude. I can't get anything set up against this guy because he's just quick hiking me. But he's still got five rushes. Oh, my God, dude. He's just running the ball now? Like, what are you doing? You're down 14-0 to in the fourth. Pass the ball. All right, it's got to be PA boot over, right? We're green dogging again. As you guys know, we're watching the running back. He goes on a route. We follow like that. And that is exactly how the blitz is supposed to work. Poetic. Give it to me. Good night, sir. 21-0. You got to quit out now. See you, buddy. Hey, even though the offense played subpar, I think the defense really stood out to me. And uh, we didn't even give up a point. We got a lot of turnovers. The green dog worked effectively. And we got another victory. What's up, guys? So here we are in practice mode. And like I said, I'm going to be showing you one part of my defense. And that is the green dog blitz. It's coming out of 3-3-5 wide, which is probably the most popular formation defensively in the entire game. So I'm going to show you two different setups to run this. One of them is the green dog blitz, and then one of them is a fake green dog blitz, where it's going to look exactly the same, but it's actually going to be coverage. And so when you do this, you basically want to play mind games with your opponent, and so they never know if you're actually blitzing or if you're playing coverage. Additionally, this blitz can be picked up if they max protect they block seven or eight people. Sometimes it gets picked up and then you got no safety help and it's just straight man coverage. Because people aren't really running one step ahead anymore, that's going to leave you very susceptible to get beat over the top for big plays. So be very, very careful when you're running this. I don't usually run this more than one time uh, a drive. I, I don't I don't try to spam this. This isn't a blitz that is going to be the base of my defense. This is something I'm going to throw in there to make my opponent confused and really mess with them. Because honestly, if you get one sack on a drive, that can really end the drive. One sack and good defense on the other downs is going to get you the ball back. So we're going to call Mike Blitz Zero on offense. I'm going to come out in bunch. Gun bunch is probably what I like to run it against the most just because they line up the best. Uh, but you can run it against really any compressed set. I would not recommend running this against something really spread out with the exception of Trips Tight End. You can actually run this against Trips Tight End with a lot of success even if they block seven. And I'll show you that after we show it against bunch. So we're going to come out in a random bunch play. And then this is the defense right here. Your user is going to be this person in the middle linebacker spot. This is actually going to be a safety if you're playing mutt. But for practice mode, I'm just going to leave it how it is. So how it's going to work is you're going to press, slide to the running back side, crash out, right? You're going to bring, that's what it's going to look like after that. You're going to bring this safety who's manned up on the running back down to the line of scrimmage. And you're going to blitz him. And then you're going to bring this guy, if you can, down so he's actually pressed up on the tight end. From there, I usually like to just shade inside. I don't normally shade over the top unless I'm afraid they're going to actually beat me over the top. For some plays like Jets Dig, if they have that weird fade route, those will beat you over the top pretty easily. But if you've got good cornerbacks, a lot of times shading inside will do the trick. So that is all you do for this blitz. Now, what a green dog is, the green dog assignment is actually on my user. How it works is I'm watching the running back. I'm essentially going to green dog the running back. If the running back stays in and blocks, I'm going to use a rush up the middle and blitz. If the running back goes out on a route, I'm going to follow the running back. To do this, I'd recommend standing about right here. That way, it's going to look like you're blitzing and you're going to run downhill every single time. And then you're going to make the decision about right here whether or not you peel off or you continue down into the hole. 
So the way this play looks right here uh, on offense, they're sending five out. Okay, so let's just say they're actually sending five out, and this is what it's going to look like. See, just like that, and you're going to have a free rusher coming off the edge. If they blocked their running back, you'd think that would pick it up. But because you're green dogging him, I'm going to set it up again. Because you're green dogging him, you're always going to be right here. The only exception is if they block an extra person like their tight end. But if you're not running this consistently, there's no way they're going to be blocking seven out of the gate. So once again, I'm going to show you the, the play art. We're going to actually block the running back this time. And uh, that is our blitz again. And it's hard to do both. But once I hike it... I'm going to come screaming up the middle, dive at the quarterback, and you get a sack again. So either way, whether or not they're blocking the running back or not, your blitz is going to come in. I mean, And like I said, the only way they're going to block that is if they block seven. Now, here's the fake green dog. It's going to look exactly the same. Press, slide out, crash. You're going to bring this guy down, except this time you're going to put him in an inside third. And bring this guy down again, too. And you're going to zone out those outside linebackers. So it looks exactly the same, except this time you're running pretty heavy coverage again with the man coverage look so by having these two looks that are identical and they're not going to know whether or not you're blitzing it's going to confuse a lot of people and unless your opponent's really good uh this is something that's going to really throw them for a loop and so once again if they call the play and they hike it you're not actually blitzing you bring your your user wherever it needs to be and uh sometimes it, the sheds right now in the game are insane so even rushing three uh, eventually you're going to get some sheds so that is essentially it for the Green Dog Blitz. I'm going to go over it against Trips tight end and show why it's even better against Trips. Uh, but one more time for the setup. Just press, crash to the side of the running back, crash out, bring this guy down, blitz him, bring this guy down as well. You can do it really fast once you get the muscle memory down. And then once he hikes it, you're just going to Green Dog the running back. It's that simple. And like I said, against Trips tight end, I think it's even better. So we're going to call Mike Blitz zero again. And then this time on offense, we're actually going to come out in trips tight end. And trips tight end might be the best offensive formation in the game. Uh, but we're going to call something random like verticals. And uh, this is what your play is going to look like. This time, you're actually going to uh, spread your, your D-line to the left away from the running back. And I'll tell you why in a second. It's the same setup. You're going to press, spread them left, crash out. I want to bring this guy down on the tight end. And this is something you got to be really, really careful about when you're playing trips tight end. Is that tight end corner play where they smart route the corner route. That absolutely destroys man coverage. Your only hope is to shade inside. I don't know why it works better, but when you shade inside, they kind of like bump the tight end. And it plays it a lot better, at least in my experience. And then, of course, you bring this guy down and you blitz him right there. The reason this is a lot better against trips is because if you notice, all the blitzers are coming off the left. So even if they max protect, they block their tight end and they block their running back, you're going to have a guy screaming off this left side, Heath right here, and he's usually going to sack the quarterback. So I don't know how it works in practice mode, but on offense, I'm going to block both my running back and my tight end. So you see, we're only sending three out, blocking seven, and the defense, we're just doing the same green dog blitz. When I hike it, now, in practice mode, he picked him up, but I'm telling you right now, online in Mutt, the way everyone's so fast, the way the running backs just play stupid in all pro, uh, a lot of times you're going to scream off, scream off the edge even if they max protect. But I, another thing I want to say about trips tight end is almost no one is going to max protect because in trips tight end, the tight end is the heart and soul of that offense. It's called trips tight end, and everybody just loves throwing to their tight end. So... Uh, nobody's going to want to block that guy. The only alternative is they're going to have is to motion block somebody in. But if you're not running this every time, why would they be motion blocking? That's just not going to happen. So the other alternative is uh, is this. The fake green dog. It looks exactly the same as the green dog. You're going to block a running back. They might even you know get antsy in the pocket. And when you hike it, it's just a coverage look. Now, again, if you're running actual 3-3-5 instead of... Uh, or 3-3-5 wide instead of having the safeties out there, then the coverage is going to be a lot weaker from those outside linebackers. So just keep that in mind. You might want to put Lurker on Littleton and McMillan if you're running 3-3-5 with the base personnel. But if you're doing that little glitch thing, uh, your safety is going to play phenomenally. So that's a quick breakdown of the green dog. I'm going to use it a little bit in this game uh, and notice how sparsely I use it. Against certain schemes, I don't use it at all. Depending on how my opponent's planning, playing, some games I don't use it at all. So Always be smart. Use your brain. This isn't something that you can just put on the field every single time and you're going to get wins, but it's something that you can strategically use and I think it's going to greatly improve your defense. Now I'm on the outside.